Good morning, everybody. I had promised to do some better videos on tracing with Silhouette Studio, and this is an image that someone asked me to look at for them, and it's very obvious to me why this doesn't trace very well. One thing that you need to realize is that Silhouette Studio's tracing function is a very basic function. It cannot distinguish color. It can only distinguish the brightness of an image. And if you look at this image, you'll see that the pink areas um, don't have much contrast in many cases. For example, the line around the shoe in this area here and the inside of the shoe isn't distinct enough for it to be able to draw lines based on the information that's there for it. This pink line would have to be much, much darker and the pink inside would have to be much lighter for it to be able to distinguish between them. I'm going to draw the trace line around, or a tra I'm going to select a trace area and draw this box around the whole image and you're going to see that there just isn't enough contrast, for example, here in this line of, of the dress and this pink portion and all the rest of this, it's very unclear how those where the separations are, I should say. And if you increase the value in the high pass filter, it gets better. But what happens as it gets better is all of this gets muddled up. The, the yellow portion is way too thick and if you were then to trace that, an outer edge will give you just outer portions of this um, and some of the lines over here and then some double lines here and lines aren't closed over here and here and that causes problems. And you see the definition of the ribbons on her ballet shoes don't show up here. Only where there's enough of a difference in color, that's where it shows up here. There's a line here and the difference to here is quite different. So you do get this here. Um, and again, her face doesn't show. The Where her hair starts and ends doesn't show. This part is thicker there's no definition of her face here, okay? So if you're using Silhouette Studio to do your tracing, you're going to have some limitations like this. If you were to use Inkscape or Make the Cut, the trace engine is much better and you'll get much better results. I'm going to show you what happens to the same image and make the cut. Ah, oh, now I forget. Do I need to import? I think I need to import a pixel trace. That's right. If I wanted to trace, then I click this button and I go find my file, which is called Dora. And again, even here, it's not doing very well. So this image really causes problems for tracing. Um, I'm going to try to increase the threshold, but I don't think it's going to make any big difference. Um, let's go down a little bit. It's doing the same thing here. There's just not enough contrast. A little bit lower, but I don't think it's going to work. No, same thing. You're not getting enough definition here, and you're getting too much here. And then you're not getting where the hair starts because the colors are just too similar. Or in Silhouette Studio anyway, the shades are too similar because it can only understand shades of gray. Now I'm going to show you the, an image that works really well for tracing. What you're looking for is something with very clearly defined dark lines. And there's nothing better than like a coloring book image. If it has no colors in it at all, it will, you know that it will work perfectly. You want closed lines and you want dark lines. So to find this image, I type Dora 
illustration into Google. It came up with a few choices and there's some additional choices over here that you can go and check out. Um, but this image looks perfect so I have already saved it and I'm going to bring it into Silhouette Studio and show you how it turns out. Okay, so here's the image and when I select the trace area you'll see right away that it's very different. It really clearly defines all these lines. If I'm doing paper piecing I will want to use the trace function because what that does is it creates double lines and you'll be able to choose colors based on these lines. Okay, What you need to do once you've traced your image is you need to release the compound path and you then have individual sections. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag away this part of it, which is the outline of the whole thing. This I'll define as black and these individual parts can be defined as different colors. Okay? And you'll also see that there might be parts that you don't need, like this over here we can just delete that, select it and delete it, as well as this little bit over here. This seems to be a bracelet, but you don't need all those little parts in there. You can choose as you go what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. But the rest of it all looks very, very good. So I'll zoom out again. And then what you'll do is once you've defined the colors of your pieces, just by selecting them and assigning a color, you can then move them aside. Well, that should be another color because that's the um, backpack. And this is the shirt, so that should be red. So you can then take all the red pieces and put them in a corner, take all the yellow pieces, put them in another corner, take all the other similar colors and put them in a corner and then cut, place your paper on your mat and cut them out. And then this you would cut out in, a sh in the color for your shadow and you would then piece all of your, or should say place all of your pieces onto this mat. That's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is you can trace the image, select the trace area, and then instead of using trace, you can select trace outer edge and that then only traces the outer portion of your image. That's if you wanted to do a print and cut. Now since there's no color on this, chances are this isn't what you'd want to do unless you wanted to have like a coloring book image. But that's how you would do, that's how you would trace the image if you wanted to do a print and cut. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about what kinds of images work well with Silhouette Studio and what kinds of images just won't work. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment and I hope I can answer your questions. Thanks for watching.